Hello, my name is Joe. I'm here today with Alex Mashinsky, CEO of Celsius. We're going to have an interesting conversation about um, custodian of custodying Bitcoin, um, other macroeconomic trends that we're seeing, and of course, you know, trends in the cryptocurrency space. So, Alex, hello. How are you doing today? Great, great. Paris, amazing. We got ex excellent weather. Do and and a full house here. We took over. We conquered the uh, the Bo the Boris here in uh, Paris. Yep. And uh, we talk about, you know, normally we talk about how uh, DeFi is going to tr conquer TradFi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what we've done here. We conquered the center of, uh, you know, of TradFi in Paris. So. Absolutely. It's a, it's a poetic sort of image. Poetic yeah. win, yes. Yeah. And just picking up on um, your, your keynote yesterday, um, you know, there was the Axie Infinity hack recently where Vitalik's response was to say that, you know, the space needs these sort of semi-centralized solutions. I mean, I'm sure Celsius has something to say on this. Well, we, we actually built it. So uh, we, don't, we totally agree with Vitalik and we built Celsius X. Mm -hmm. The website is celsiusx.io. And if you're a Celsius user, you can automatically basically take any of the assets you have, mm -hmm. uh, lock them, and then we will wrap and issue natively issue assets on the blockchain. So, for example, on Polygon or mm -hmm. or some other chain. And the main advantage with that is that you you don't use layer two bridges. So layer two bridges, you are one blockchain. I'm another blockchain. We put a smart contract between us, yep. and we we basically. So here it's it's any to any, mm -hmm. and it's native. So we're not relying on uh, the code being written properly or. Uh, some hacker figuring out a back door or jumping through a window or whatever. So, mm -hmm. so we, we're, we're solving, uh, imagine if you build a bridge between two blockchains and half of the cars fell in the water, right? No one would drive that bridge. Well, that's basically what we've done with layer two bridging, right? It's, okay. Unfortunately, it's not a, a solution because uh, there's not going to be mass market adoption if right. half of the cars fall, fall into the river, right? right. So, so we build a tunnel instead okay. called Celsius X, layer zero instead yeah. of layer two. And uh, you should try it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, any response from Vitalik? We're waiting for Vitalik to use it, <laughs> to wrap some ETH, you know, so. Still driving the car over the bridge, you know? Yeah, well, he, look, he's, he, like you said, he uh, understands the problem and he's basically saying, look, uh, we don't have to be 100% DeFi. Yeah. CeFi and DeFi are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. And you would, sometimes you need to use CFI, sometimes you need to do, use DeFi, and that's what Celsius does every day. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of good things happening in this space, a lot of good things happening for Celsius, but there's also uh, a, a saddening macroeconomic backdrop at the moment. What's your most pressing concern, or, or what's what are you losing sleep over? Yeah. So I, I'm a Ukrainian by birth, you know, mm -hmm. and and obviously uh, when the wor world goes to war, there's not just a war between. Russia and Ukraine, and, and it's definitely not a war between the Russian people and the Ukrainian people. This is like one crazy guy picking up a war with the rest of the world. Mm. And, and uh, here, uh, the crypto community came together very quickly, right? We, we published an address, I think, a day after the war started mm -hmm. with the Ukrainian ministry, finance ministry. We, we raised, uh, helped the Ukraine raise over $70 million. Mm -hmm. I was at Bitcoin 2022. I just had an interview with the deputy uh, minister mm -hmm. about all of this, and they need more. So yeah. I'm calling on the community to, uh, you can find on my, the links on my uh, Twitter mm -hmm. at Mashinsky or, or, uh, you can also go to the uh, official uh, Ukrainian ministry um, uh, Twitter handle. They have the BTC and ETH mm -hmm. addresses published, USDC as well. Mm -hmm. So so all of us, uh, but th th what we're celebrating is really how quickly the community moved yep. before the US, before UK, before France jumped in and decided to help yep. the Ukraine. Crypto was there and they used, they started using the money the next day. They already, they were buying food rations, they were buying... Uh, what they needed for the hospitals for uh, you know and so on yeah absolutely i mean what, what do you think that says about the cryptocurrency industry in in its reaction to you know setting up these donation addresses what does that say about the industry well we, we arrived right so so i think uh until now we were a sideshow until now we were uh, the community was uh perceived as like these quirky weird people who decided to print their own monopoly money and now you're seeing that uh, nations are calling on us mm -hmm. to help them out. So, you know, we're in this um, 
tricky col consolidation period. You know, Bitcoin's around 40,000 at the time of recording. Yeah. Um, do you have any price predictions you'd like to share with us? You know, one of the things we like to do together on a regular basis. Yeah, so so we called the bottom. I was on several shows on uh, February 22nd, 24th. Mm -hmm. And people asked me the same thing. Okay, you know, I think it was $33,000. And I was like, no, this is the bottom, right? Okay. We have very strong support in that 30 to 33,000. Sure. And uh, between uh, Luna buying, you know, billions of dollars over the Bitcoin, between uh, a lot of like you see here, right? I mean, the show is is uh, it's a mob scene, right? It's uh, very institutional. Very, and this is just institutional. Imagine if they invited the retail guys, <laughs> right? So this is all institutional. Uh, so I definitely think that uh, uh, demand is here. Okay. Uh, so I don't see us revisiting uh, pr previous lows. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, there are some clouds in the in the sky. So one example, Russia hasn't given up. That's not like they walked away, right? They, yep. They're going to come back and attack Ukraine again. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's preparing for it, but that's going to put pressure on the public markets, on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on. Mm -hmm. Another driver is, again, the Fed, right? Don't fight the Fed. Uh, and the Fed right now is tightening, raising rates pulling liquidity out of the market and all that does is is basically makes people uh less giddy less uh or uh, willing to take risk okay so uh so that's gonna it takes longer it's gonna take us longer mm -hmm. to hit new highs but uh, i still expect us to break that sixty thousand this year on bitcoin mm -hmm. uh break uh, the 4500 on ethereum okay those are the kind of two levels that i think are important to watch so all-time highs this year all-time highs this year, mm -hmm. unless we really go to World War Three, right? So if we, if yeah. if if Russia does something stupid like throw oh, a right. nuclear bomb or mm -hmm. or uh, start killing people with chemical weapons or whatever yeah. in the Ukraine because they want to win at any cost, mm. uh, then we are talking about a completely different scenario. Yeah, yeah, that's the we're all not hoping for that. Yes, one. exactly. We're all knocking on wood. This is not wood, so we can't do it, but <laughs> yeah. knocking on wood to make sure that uh, it doesn't happen. And uh, yeah, obviously you, you occupy this unique vantage point. Um, you see the retail side, you see the institutional side. Yeah. Obviously you mentioned institutions being here, we're in the former bourse, the former stock exchange. Um, what are you seeing from the institutional side right now? Um, are there any sort of triggers, any, any, things, any catalysts that you see that are bringing this new money into the space? So first, there's a record uh, institutional participation, right? So okay. everybody's uh, dipping their toe, mm -hmm. even if they're not doing much. Like I I even here in France, mm -hmm. uh, you see uh, the MF and others uh, uh, pushing to adopt uh, digital assets. You know that right there. Yeah, they're the across MF. the street. I know. <laughs> uh, they're watching us. With yeah. uh, they're taking pictures. They have one of these like, <laughs> long cameras taking picture of everybody walking in uh, and out of their bores. Uh, but uh, uh, the point is, is, is that I think across the world, uh, both the regulators and institutions mm -hmm. have accepted that this is a new asset class, right? So now, mm -hmm. now the question is, what are we doing about it? So Goldman opens a desk with 100 people and it's a city, adds a, uh, hires several hundred people for, for the crypto desk, right? They understand that uh, their, their uh, high net worth are asking for it, so mm -hmm. they have to fill those orders, they have to provide the service. And uh, they're starting to explore how do they participate because, mm -hmm. it, you know, normally w if you're an institution and you want to, let's say you're doing stocks and bonds and suddenly you want to do commodities, you just go to your regular vendor and say, hey, add the commodities module to my software. Yeah. You flip a switch yeah. and you're in the commodities business. Okay. You can't do that with crypto, right? Crypto is a completely different animal. It's running on different rails, different mm -hmm. software. But, but they're coming. The, the key thing, because... Yeah. It's also good news, right? Because you asked me about the price of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Think about it. No bank in the United States owns Bitcoin. No major bank in France owns yeah. Bitcoin, right? So, so, so that's all good thing because that's all new demand, yep. additional demand. So we have the same number of coins, right? Mm -hmm. There's never going to be more than 21 million Bitcoin, yep. but the demand is, is, is coming, mm -hmm. increasing, right? So yeah. more demand, no more supply, higher prices. Fantastic. Perhaps as a final question then, I've asked you what you're losing sleep over. What's getting out of bed? I sleep like a baby. I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, what's, what's getting Look, out of bed? Let in me the morning, tell you why it? I'm sleeping like a baby because okay. most people. That's a good it, way of spinning it's, around. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's very simple. Uh, uh, so people come to me and they're like, uh, you know, they show me spreadsheets with how they're calculating how much Bitcoin they need to have. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? They're like, 
well, that's how I, that's my formula, and uh, I'm and I average in, and I'm like, it's very simple. Okay. If you bought some Bitcoin and you're sleeping, you can't sleep at night. That means you have too much Bitcoin. Okay. Probably. And if you bought some Bitcoin and you sleep like a baby, that means you don't have enough Bitcoin. <laughs> okay. It's that simple. It's a sweet okay? spot. Okay. It's just a sweet spot. Find okay. that sweet spot. Sweet spot. And and just stick with it because for each person it's, it's yeah. a different. Some people are very neurotic and one percent of their assets in Bitcoin is too much. Okay. And and some people are like me where the vast majority of my assets are in Bitcoin and I still sleep like a baby. I keep buying more and more, trying to find that point where I'm not going to sleep well at night and I can't find it. So my conviction is much higher than most people. Yeah. Uh, and and the conviction is because. Our traditional monetary system, uh, TradFi, is, is is rotten from the inside. It's it's you know under this I have a shirt that says banks are not your friends, you know and and uh, unfortunately again banks are so greedy and so desperate to steal from all of us right mm -hmm. take take from us so they can get, deliver profits to their shareholders. Mm -hmm. That's all they're doing is just stealing from us, making money on the money we made, right, and then giving it all to their shareholders. And they're not going to change that business model. So you can't fix that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why we're building a new system, and in that new system, Bitcoin is king. Yep. You know, uh, Ethereum is queen, and and uh, Doge is the jester. And do, Doge, <laughs> Doge is the jester. I love it. You see, we're a good team. We're going on the road show together. So instead of creating more of that, yep. uh, we have too many companies that are really ruining or or, or um, they're making us lose customers. Like when you give somebody 10 x leverage and they blow up, they're never going to come back to crypto. You lost them forever. So we we now we need to recycle people instead of growing the community. So for us, if you want your coins and my coins to be more valuable, mm -hmm. the main thing we have to do is make sure we don't burn people because we try to charge them seven percent on the credit card transaction or where we give them leverage and stole their coins. Right? Yeah. Those are the things we have to really change. Thank you so much, Alex. So Alex Mashinsky, CEO of Celsius. Even um, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me.